Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 9 of our API and database testing with Specflow and C Sharp. And in this video, we'll be talking about database testing for WCF API with stored procedure. And this video is a part of our part 8. So before watching this part, please go ahead and watch that video since this video is a complete continuation of that video. Alright, so let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same project which we have been working so long and you can see that in our previous video which is nothing but part 8 we were discussing about the scenario outline and also we discussed how to create a store procedure and uh, how to use this store procedure for inserting a value which is great. But now there is a problem. As we can see that every time while we do a testing we are relying on a external data like this the employee contribution. And we really don't know whether this contribution is exactly working as the business scenario because sometime if the business scenario is changing then scenario that you have right now has to be updated based on the business case change. And uh, for a new tester like me or like you who is going to do this testing uh, this value is not really going to make sense and how the business logic is really going to happen. So for that reason it is always very very important that you write a mock test for those kind of scenarios. So what we're going to do is we can write a simple mock test maybe uh, this is not very much practiced in many of the companies but for some of the bigger organization where they have to have a complete clear understanding of the business workflow they used to write some of the mock test cases. So we already discussed about mocking framework in our Execute Automation YouTube channel video series where you mock the actual uh, methods and the APIs in a, uh, in a very different fashion like a developer. So uh, we are not really going to touch the mocking framework this time. Rather, we are going to write a mock SQL store procedure which is going to really address the uh, business scenario and then we're going to uh, make use of that in our scenario outline so that it will be more meaningful than compared to the scenario that you are seeing right here. So what is the mock uh, store procedure that we're going to write? So as you can see in the uh, code, if you go to the service1.svc, you can see that the get pf employee contribution so far, actually this is the uh, business uh, logic for our employee pf contribution. And this is the employee contribution for the employer and, uh, and this is the actual uh, business logic. Which is pretty easy as you can see it is very very simple. All it's doing is getting the salary and it's multiplying by uh, 30 to get its percentage and that is the basic salary. And then it is again calculating uh, with the 12 percentage of the basic salary as the contribution and then multiplying the contribution and the total duration. So this is the uh, complete uh, business scenario that is being performed. So how to uh, get this achieved using uh, the store procedure? It's very simple, right? The salary is coming from a database. The total duration is coming from a database and you know which employee and the employee ID can also be got from the, uh, can also be retrieved from the database. So it's all there in the database. So why not write a store procedure? So for that I'm going to flip to SQL Server Management Studio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write one more store procedure this time. And the store procedure is going to be a very very simple mock store procedure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write something like this. Create procedure sp underscore mock test pf emp contribution. And I'm going to say that the id is going to be integer and the result is what I'm really going to expect. So what is the actual value which is going to be for the employee PF contribution, right? So that's what I'm going to do this time. So it's going to return me in a float and that value is what I'm going to re return as an output. So that's the output and then I'm going to say as begin and then in the begin I'm going to say I'm just going to declare some stuff here EMP salary just nothing but the integer and then declare duration word which is going to be the integer because these two I really require select at EMP salary which is nothing but the salary at duration word is equal to from employees where the ID 
is the ID which I'm passing as a parameter, right? Great. And then I'm going to calculate basic salary. So the basic salary I need to calculate here, right? So how do we calculate? So basically uh, the calculation is going to be something like this at basic, which is going to be a float type and contrib, which is equal to a float type again. And then I'm going to set at basic is equal to. So as I said, we are going to calculate the basic from the employee salary into 30%, right? So that's the calculation. And then I'm going to get the contributions based on the 12% or 18% of the basic. And finally, I'm going to return the result contribution into total duration. And the total duration is the duration worked. That's it. So now if I execute this, oops, oh, I forgot a comma there, sorry. And now if I try to execute, all right, so the command completed successfully. Great. So now let's try to run this stored procedure and see how it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the stored procedure, which is going to have a output value. So I want to try that as well. So let's see how it works. So declare at values float, and then I'm going to execute this stored procedure. So execute uh, mock. All right, and then the value of the employee ID and I want the result is equal to at value and the output and then I need to print and see what is the value. All right, so let's try to execute this. There we go. So for the employee uh, Kartik, which is the one which is 9288. So for employee Prashant, Let's see what is the value. It's 25401. Great. And you can see it's also coming in decimals. That's why I said it is floating. So great. So this is what is the actual mock store procedure I got. So I'm going to calculate it exactly with the mock store procedure and see how the real time WCF application is working. So it is like a database testing directly with the WCF API. So you are going to write a mock test data operation in your stored procedure, and then you're gonna verify that with your real WCF application. It's kind of cool, right? So what I'm gonna do is, I will go to my PF service, and then I'm gonna write this stored procedure this time. I'm not gonna use the previous one. So what I have did is, I'm, I did very, very small change here. So the scenario outline is this. Verify if employee PF contribution for specific employee from mock store procedure. And instead of this verification from the employee contribution, I am verifying with the mock store procedure. So I need to implement this particular step definition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press F12 and this is going to bring me up this, uh, this step to be generated. So I'm going to press yes. And then I'm going to go to the PF web service steps.cs and then I'm going to write the steps here. All right. So what is the step that I'm going to write here is to execute the stored procedure and get the mock data from the stored procedure. So as you can see that the data which I need to pass in here is just the employee ID. That is the only thing which I need to pass, right? So why don't we just change this uh, parameter to employee ID and then and start executing the store procedure. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy paste some of the code from here because basically this is what is the procedure to execute the store procedure. So I'm going to just copy paste this and instead of uh, executing with the duration parameters or the salary parameter, I'm going to execute this time ID and the result. So why is this result suddenly I'm passing in? What is the point of passing in the result here? Because the written type of this particular uh, store procedure is going to be result, right? So that is the only thing which I have to pass. So you can see that the out parameter is at result. This parameter is also expected. All right. And the store procedure name. So the store procedure name is going to be SP uh, mock PF employee contribution. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it right here. So everything is good. And now we can execute our store procedure from this guy. All right. So now this is going to return as a data table. That's what it is doing actually. 
now if I just get the result so you can use any variable here it is not just result you have to pass because I have the at result here it's not like that it can be anything you can also use output or you can use something like return data or something like that it can be anything and then this is the result which is coming from your mock store procedure and you need to verify this mock store procedure value with the value that you are getting from your web service right that's the whole intention of doing it so what we're going to do is again we're going to call our web service which is going to perform the operation and get the result so i'm going to copy this guy and i'm going to paste it right here and okay so this is going to be the result db so that we can differentiate and this is going to be result web service or maybe ws so get pf employee contribution so far so what is this particular feature file doing it is going to contribute check for the employee pf contribution right so which is great so this is the method to perform that operation and now we have result from both the database which is the mock database and the result from a web service all i have to do is just to assert and see how things work so assert dot or equals the expected is nothing but our mock value so the result db and the actual is going to be the result ws which is nothing but coming from the web service and then if they are not same then say that the value from database and web service or mismatching so you can just uh you can just write like this all right great so everything's good but before starting to execute oops i think i missed one parenthesis here so before executing this i actually made a small mistake here i made a small mistake here the mistake is since this is going to be at result and it's going to return as a value as you saw in this guy while running this store procedure like this it's going to return you a value but the implementation of our execute proc with param dt actually expects it to return a table so right now it's just returning a at result value but we need to return a table this time so how to do that so for doing that you need to use this line of code so it is actually a temporary table creation in the store procedure so that you can create like this at temp of a table with one column one as a float and then insert the at temp value as the result that you are getting back from here and then return the table right the temporary table so now if you run your store procedure remember the last time while you execute the store procedure you got like this 25401 but this time let's say if i execute this and if i execute the query this time you can see the result is going to be the same but it is going to return as a table you can see it's returning as like a column one and here's the value 25401.6 it's exactly the same result but this time it is coming as a table format it has a column and it has uh, a column name and everything like that so this is what is exactly we require for our execute proc with param dt right so now if i execute i will actually get a value and this value will actually be a data table format so i need to get its row and i need the first column value so that's what i expect return value something like that oops I need to make it as a string dot to string great so now we have a value here and this value is what I need to compare with our web service right so this is going to return me a uh, value which is going to be a hmm I'm sorry I cannot make this as a string because it is a float type so let's return this as a float maybe and see how it works i really don't know how it's going to behave but i'm just going to cast it this time maybe with a float and see how it works i really don't know so i'm going to hit a breakpoint there and i'm going to go over here to uh, the uh, specific step definitions all right just hit a breakpoint out there as well 
okay so now we expect a value from the return and now if I just go over hmm seems like we are actually not getting any value out this time and it is throwing us an error and the error is specified cast is not valid okay so what is the value so it is getting a value which is our expected value I believe so the table has got yep the table has got 9288 which is great but the value is not the one uh, it is not in in, uh, in a float value this time so what I'm gonna do is uh, instead of doing uh, like this that's what I was expecting because this is not gonna behave as I'm expecting so uh, let this be a war type this is the return value and let this be here and let's compare these two value this time so I'm just gonna debug this I'm gonna use the implicitly typed variable instead of converting that uh, to a specific type because this var type also knows what type it is so let's see how it works all right so it came here and now if I do a step over so we got a written value so you can see that it is 922 which is great and now I expect the web service to return me a 9288 as well so let's see how it goes all right so it's also returning as 9288 which is great so the web service and the database is returning as 9288 so our mock store procedure is working as expected right and now if I do a step over so the R equal got passed so now our test got fully passed so now if I do a continue you can see that our test will pass so this is how you can actually mock your testing using a mock stored procedure you can write into your SQL server like this all the logics that whatever you know and then you can compare the stored procedures value the database operations everything with the web service so that you can do a database testing at the same time your web service testing side by side so this is how you can do database testing and web service testing using stored procedures spec flow and c sharp so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day thank you so much bye bye